While the weather is gorgeous, the builders are back and we're making progress. So let's go inside and take a look. So like we've been doing the last 10 years, we're going to heat this house with wood and wood alone as well as the solar heating from the sun. But we will not have a typical HVAC system. We will not have vents and ducting all over the house. So we are going to move the heat from the upstairs where the wood burning stove is to the downstairs using water in a hydronic system. Now the problem we ran into is when we asked our plumber to get quotes and the quotes were around $12,000, the quotes for, were for a complete system, the boiler, the piping, the insulation, everything. Well, we wanted to break it up. The companies were unwilling to break it up. And in fact, when we asked just for the drawings, they said that alone would be $2,000. So our plumber, being a little adventurous like me and being a very nice guy, said, you know what? I think we can do this ourselves. He was kind enough to go ahead because he had already installed several of these hydronic systems to include one in his own barn, and he swears by it. He said, I think we can put this together ourselves. So the first step of the process is right below my feet. So when we pass the hot water through the floor, we do not want to heat the earth. We want to heat the house. So we have to do some preparation of the floor to accomplish that. First of all, on the base, we have gravel. And then on top of the gravel, we have an inch and a half of polystyrene. It's basically insulation to make sure the heat goes up and not down. Then we have a wire mesh on top of that, and that allows us to tie the PEX tubing to the wire mesh based on a diagram that will equally distribute the hot water throughout the floor and heat the floor evenly. So let's see how we do that. So we're in the utility room downstairs, and what you see before me is the manifold to this hydronic system. Now there are four loops in this basement, which means that there are eight lines. Water goes out and then returns. Flow out, return, flow out, return, flow out, and return. The last line here is just a temperature sensor. And we're not going to use this now, but we put it in the floor in case we make changes in the future. But as you can see, as the water flows out and heads out along the perimeter of the house, you generally want heat to start on the perimeter and then come in towards the center. Now, because the, the hot water loses temperature as it goes out, you want all these loops to be the same length or at least roughly the same length. And so when it comes back to the return, all of these should be roughly the same temperature because it's lost the same amount of energy as it goes through the loops. So let's go through the house and take a look at the loops themselves. So the reason these tubes just don't run back and forth in a continuous pattern is because we have walls in the basement. Because we have the floor plan, the plumber was able to work around that floor plan to ensure that there are no pipes directly under a wall because when you put the wall in you fasten it to the concrete and those fasteners can puncture this water line so the way he's planned it is this is the girls room and there are essentially voids where the walls will go and as you see a bunch of piping coming in here you can probably guess that's where the doorway is so this is the girls room with a couple of loops in there over here is the bathroom Something to note in the bathroom too. This is a cutout that we're putting in here for a future toilet. Now we're using a composting toilet, but if somebody wants to put a standard toilet in there, toilets generally have a wax ring around them. 
Well, you don't want this hot water and hot concrete to be near that wax ring because it'll actually melt it. It gets that warm. So it goes just on the outside of the shower, around the bath, the uh, toilet, and then out the door and into the next room. And right here we have a vanity. So there's a void here. You don't need the heat under the vanity, but when you're standing and doing your hair, you want your feet nice and warm. Here we have the stairwell, and over there we have a boys room, and in between the two, we have the big center area. So while I'm down here, let's just talk about some of the plumbing that was done before the concrete pour. First of all, we have drains and vents for the bathrooms. We have a vanity here, we have a toilet, we have a shower and tub right here. We have an ejection pit here that will take gray water up to the upstairs and drain it out. And then there's a drain in the utility room because you always want a drain where you're gonna have a hot water heater or any collection of water or water pipes, because if there's a leak, you want it to go down and get out of the house quickly before it gets into any of the rooms. Now, the base of the shower or the tub, actually we're gonna have a tub and shower here, they don't concrete that in because you don't know exactly where that drain is gonna fall and when you put the trap in, like the plumber said, it's a lot easier to dig through gravel and throw a trap in than it is to cut through concrete and put it in. So once the tub comes in, they'll get that trap put in and this will all be sealed up here. So as we go from the heated living area to the unheated, unconditioned larder area, obviously we do not want hydronic heating. This is simply going to be a concrete floor. Again, I had another drain put in because I'm just a fan of drains. I do not like water getting trapped anywhere or having to take a pump and pump it out. So I've got a drain in the middle of the larder. Now on this side, you notice this board is here, the concrete will only go to here. I want moisture in my root cellar and I'm actually sitting in the root cellar. Moisture comes up from the ground and provides a nice environment for a root cellar in here. So I don't want to cap it with concrete. So the larder will be slightly warmer and slightly drier than the root cellar. And that's how we do it. Leave an open floor here and a concrete floor in there. So here we are in the attached wall opinion. Now this will be a concrete floor also, but the difference in this floor is it will be an inch and a half lower than the basement floor and another drain. This drain connects directly to the forms for the footer and goes out that pipe that goes to the pond behind me. Again, I'm concerned about water getting into the basement. And if something happens in here, we have a lot of plants in here, we're going to have a glass covering. I do not want water from here to go into the basement. So it will step down an inch and a half. It would take an awful lot of water to fill this entire area up with an inch and a half before it got into the basement. So I think we're pretty safe. So even though our plumber has designed this to go around all the existing walls, the question would then be, what happens if you want to add a wall or move a wall in the future? Well, you can still do that, but you need to map out your floor pretty well. And in fact, he recommended we take pictures and he's already done that. He takes pictures of everything. He takes measurements. So we know exactly where each tube is because you have at least 12 inches and sometimes 24 inches between tubes. So you can, fasten the walls down between the tubes if you need to. And in fact, over on the left side, we're doing that to prevent from having to go all the way around the girl's bedroom to get back to the manifold. So it is possible to move and add things later, but you need to be very precise about how you measure out and how you take pictures and set up a grid system so you know where, exactly where those pipes are and you don't puncture them in the future. Well, we got everything in place. We hope to pour the concrete next, but they've been backed up quite a bit because of weather lately. So we'll see when we can get them out here. And then hopefully this stack that's right behind me will be the next to go up. Thanks for joining us. And if you subscribe, thank you very much. And if you haven't, please join us on our journey.